may not be suitable for all audiences. Well, that's enough of this drivel drivel. Let's find out what we want to know about. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Give music. Give music. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> I want to welcome you back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger, a professional artist and educator who attempts to provide the best in art historical content. If you like the content, you got to follow along with America's favorite art teacher and just, you know, participate, you know, like, share, subscribe, do all the things. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Why is it in old photos nobody smiles? We're going to answer that and a couple other questions today, as you know, because you, you clicked on the video. So let's jump in. I tell you what, I love old family photos. I can't tell you how many hours I spent in my youth digging through boxes of old family photos at my grandparents' house and just looking at the old snapshots and pictures of my family and things like that. I just love it. But sometimes there are questions that arise from these family photos, so let's jump into that a little bit. Beginning in the late 1820s, photography was art and science, but not quite yet accepted as an art form, but definitely had artistry involved. This was a recording of history. It was a family document of sorts. As technology advanced, it became even more popular, more accessible, allowing for the snapshot of family memories to become even more readily available. Prior to the photo, families with the means would have commissioned an artist to paint these portraits, but now, in just a matter of minutes, a person could have snapped a photo of the family, and oftentimes, nobody is smiling in these photos. Over the years of teaching lab and digital photography, students have asked me, Mr. Berger, why is everybody from this past so angry? But their expression, ironically, has absolutely nothing to do with their mood. So, for example, we can go to the oldest photo that we know of that had an exposure time of eight hours. Now, what does that mean? That means that the hole that went into the camera was opened for eight hours to capture that image. Now, I don't know if you've tried to smile for a long period of time or not, but try smiling for eight hours straight. It just isn't going to happen. This is an example of photography from 1826. With Daguerre in the 1830s, 1840s, the daguerreotype process allowed for this to happen a little bit quicker, but still we're talking about 20 minutes for a photograph. This isn't like the camera on your phone. It takes a considerable amount of time to capture that image, not just a fleeting second in real time. There were restraints, there were devices that were used to keep your head still and in a certain position. And at this particular time, lots of the equipment and materials that were used to create a photo were toxic and dangerous materials, including, but definitely not limited to, mercury, causing a lot of mercury poisoning within the photography profession. And so this was not just time consuming in terms of taking the photo, but also in terms of processing and making a print from that photo. Here we go. What, what? Uh. We also have to look at the style of portraits that were created in the 17th and 18th centuries by painters. A lot of their work had very solemn sorts of faces, a little bit more serious, and so in some regards, the photographers are also reflecting the style of the portrait painters of the time period. And portrait painters were not painting smiles because of the social etiquette that really shied away from smiling. This had lots of contributing factors like dental care and people being a little self-conscious about their smile, about their teeth, 
things like that. And so saying cheese with a big old smiley face just wasn't the standard. Side note, in Victorian England, it was common not to say cheese, but prunes, because saying prunes would tighten your lips into a more socially accepted standard of beauty when taking a photograph. I always believe you, Bill. Have another drink. As time would get closer to the late 19th century, specifically 1888, George Eastman and his Kodak company would revolutionize the way people interact with their cameras. And in 1900, the Kodak Brownie camera was marketed for children and sold for only a dollar. Now, a dollar then isn't what a dollar is now, but this allowed for many more individuals to get into photography, and that's exactly how many professional photographers, including James Vanderzee, who I've talked about before, got into the profession. But at any rate, by the time we get to the late 1920s, there becomes a little bit more variety with expressions, a little bit more dabbling into color, candid type photos, and more affordability. It was at that time that you would see gangsters and flappers and all kinds of individuals taking their photos with a little bit more free expression. And that's why when we look at old photos, people aren't looking as joyful as they may be inwardly. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. You have yourself a great day.